Yeah, well, that's what they were doing. They called it, right? They actually had a name in French of saying like, it is the last supper. So they acknowledged it ahead of time. The main sort of Christ figure at the center of it recognized mm -hmm. that on her Instagram before she took it down um, or his, her, they, them. I'm not sure what pronouns she uses, but yeah, until they got the backlash, they were very open about exactly what it was. And uh, I'm sure you're familiar with what is happening to Walk Olympics right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, it's so interesting because you look at France, who... Um, really used to have a very distinct, rich culture. I mean, obviously, mm. art, history, music, philosophy. Mm. It's incredible. But right now, they've lost. You know, they, they're still sitting on the branch that was mm. created by the tree of Christianity and Western civilization, but they've cut the branch off from the tree, right? So they're sitting on a branch that's about to crumble is really what they're doing. And... Carl Truman wrote about kind of the opening ceremonies there. Hmm. And he said, it is an anti-culture of nothingness. All they have yeah. is unique, but they don't have anything to replace it with. And what they are able to create is just vulgarity, right? Hmm. That's all that they've got. And so I think that that was really on display during the opening ceremonies. Right. So do you believe that it was really the mocking and of Last Supper? What they're, the, those drag queens? Yeah, well, that's what they were doing. They called it, right? They actually had a name in French of saying, like, it is the Last Supper. So they acknowledged it ahead of time. The main sort of Christ figure at the center of it recognized mm -hmm. that on her Instagram before she took it down. Um, or his, her, they, them. I'm not sure what pronouns she uses. But, yeah, until they got the backlash, they were very open about exactly what it was. And I do mm -hmm. feel like that's sort of what happens in the woke world is they transgress or they overtly offend and and it's obvious to everybody but then they gaslight and they're like that actually yes is the gaslight That's yeah it was. you know we weren't really doing that um and then later on it comes out actually that is what we were doing and it's good right so they have this oh that's not happening but it is happening and also it's good that it's happening so it's like you absolutely saw that with the opening ceremonies too which is right. i feel like most normal people are like yeah, you're just lying to us now. I think that enough people are like, we know exactly what you're doing, and it doesn't matter if you call us bigots, haters, racist, whatever. Like you, that's phobic. Yeah, the names don't yeah, <laughs> work. You don't have any power. Anymore. Bigot. <laughs> exactly. What is the really the intention of the organizers of Paris Olympics? Okay. What What is their intention? I think that um, you know, in their worldview. It's a worldview characterized by victims and victimizers. You know, like mm. that's just how they see the world. They see it through oppressor and oppressed. Yeah. And obviously the person that is victimized and the person that is oppressed has the most moral authority. And mm. so they are always trying to position themselves as the one that is oppressed or as the one that is victimized or as the mm. one that is underprivileged. And I'll tell you what, there is no more privileged class than I would say the LGBTQ identity. They are celebrated by month long, you know, holidays here in the United States. They're mm. overrepresented in media and they oftentimes have prominent voices and, and status. Like even, you know, the, the new vice president candidate on the Democrat ticket um, uh. even in the um, COVID lockdown, um, COVID um, epoch that we experienced here. He handed out COVID vaccines based on your victimized status, not based on whether or not you had the most health concerns, but whether or not you were like a person of color. And so to be in the victimized class actually does earn you special privileges. And so I think that what they're trying to do is they're trying to position themselves as part of the victimized class because it gives them more moral authority. And who do you hmm. critique in that situation when you critique, you know, the oppressors? And that is like white, Christian, heterosexual, male. And so you can kind of see all of that um, emblematic in The Last Supper. And so I think that it was a direct attack against, you know, all of the things that that right. epitomize the oppressor class for them. 
Um, but it means an attack on Christianity, which is absolutely mm. the opposite because it's Christianity. It is Christian values. It is the themes that are explicitly laid out both in the Old Testament, but then also in the New Testament, where that is where you get human rights from. That is where you get equality among people. That is where, like you said in your opening prayer, we really don't just see one another as brothers and sisters. We are brothers and sisters. We are brothers and sisters. You don't get that kind of connection, unity, and Amen. family through any other religious tradition, and you certainly don't get it through secular humanism. It only comes through Christ and his work on the cross, where we are all equal, we are all one, we all belong to one body, one faith, you know, we are unified within that. And so, of course, that's what they're seeking to tear down. Wow, that's powerful, Sis Kaylee. Uh, and regarding Imane Caliph, an athlete with BSD, difference of sex development, has garnered significant attention. What are your thoughts on how society and sports organizations should approach the inclusion of athletes with BSD? And what impact do you believe this has on our uh, understanding of gender and family? It's They've been pretty cryptic about what exactly is going on with him. You know, they have mm. not. Um, it sounds to me like a situation where there are some unfortunate. Okay. So we talk about intersex, okay? Mm. And intersex is sort of an umbrella term where um, it can encapsulate a lot of different kinds of developments that are not perfectly typical, either in terms of their genetic structure, right? Where it's not mm. just straight XX or XY, or in terms of their um, reproductive um, function or their external um, sexual organs. And so there are some times where children are born with ambiguous genitalia or where you're not mm. exactly sure if the child is male or female. And sometimes mm. it's more of an internal problem that's not diagnosed until later, until puberty. And so we do need to extend incredible compassion to people that find themselves with any kind of intersex condition because it does impact very often their development, very, very often their capacity for reproduction. And so this is something where we need to be empathetic. Mm -hmm. What is going on with this boxer, um, both him and um, Yu Ting, who I think that is yeah, the, from Taiwan, Taiwan mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. is that there's there was enough of clarity on their, um, their genetic structure mm -hmm. to make it obvious that they had a competitive advantage. And this is why they were excluded from other competitions in the past, because genetically they're male. That's what they are. Have we had a look? Do we need to take a look at their genitalia? No, we don't. Um, but the reality is that this carries competitive advantages with it. And this is another example of, of sort of global gaslighting. All of us can mm. look at these two boxers and see much more um, defined muscle structure. You know, when right. you were watching that boxing match between um, the Al Algerian boxer, with the female um, Italian boxer, look at the reach, right? His arms were so much longer than her arms. There's very, very clear benefit to going through male puberty that even if you were to lower your testosterone levels through cross-sex hormones or something like that, that don't get diminished just because, you know, you are now on some kind of like puberty blockers. When your mm. body goes through that kind of male puberty, you know, you've got higher oxygen levels, you've got a larger heart and lung capacity, you've got you've got more bone density in your hands, you've got a longer reach in your arms, you've got, I mean, look at the way there, women have much more um, wider hips, men have broader shoulders. There's no kind of um, developmental process that men go through puberty that does not advantage them in a sport like boxing. And so we all could see the advantage. We could all see very clearly these two things are not the same. And yet there was a global campaign to tell us, don't believe your lying eyes. This is a woman. Yeah. The media is covering this uh this up um the olympics are there defending that Imane caliph is a woman so yeah. how can we filter all these things and um, when we're seeing this um uh, yeah. this lies in front of us again i think it goes back to the victim victimizer the oppressor oppressed narrative like they have mm. to they don't have a okay everybody has a worldview it's not mm. like you just believe this point and this point and this point this point and they're all disconnected all of us have to organize what we believe under some system of beliefs. And so you and I 
believe that there is a creator who made the world and he made mm. it good. And he is different from his creation. He is not one with his creation. He's distinct from his creation. And right. that he made that creation with order. And he made that creation with a specific nature. And because of those natures, we can then derive, because we are made in the image of God, because we are made male and female, we can actually derive different truths from that. And then all of the other things that we believe will flow from that system, right? This understanding of the creator creation distinctive, and then the design within creation. And so we are going to look at the differences between male and female in a boxing competition through the lens of that worldview. We're going to look at things like marriage and family through the lens of that worldview. Right. So the other side, you know, the progressive side, um, the gender ideology side, right? The side that says you can remake family in your own image, the side mm. that, that children who are two weeks or 20 weeks or 32 weeks ge in gestation in utero are not an actual baby. I mean, all of that is flowing from a worldview, right? That says that we are the, we either that, the creator and the creation that there's an overlap that there's no distinction that those meld that we can be our own creator right that we are that there is no such thing as a creator so that we can be the ultimate moral authority that reason is the highest level of understanding and authority not some kind mm. of um revealed authority through scripture or through the person of jesus christ whatever it is like they have elevated themselves to an authority structure, which means that they get to define the boundaries of reality. And which also says that who is like, they also have a salvation narrative, right? We have a salvation narrative, which is we all need to be saved. We can't right. save ourselves. Christ has come to save us. They also want a salvation narrative. Their salvation narrative is there's always a group of people that are oppressors and there are always a group of people that are oppressed. The oppressors are the ones that are victimizing. The oppressed are the ones being victimized. And, and how do you get saved? Well, for these oppressors to, in essence, make themselves subservient to the victimized, this group can never be fully absolved. They're always going to be guilty just by nature of their station. These guys are always going to be innocent by nature of their station. And so like you can see all of these different worldview aspects working themselves and things like an Olympic boxing match where you go, OK, because this guy has, um, you know, either some kind of physical condition, but maybe an ideological perspective of I can be a woman um, hmm. that makes him the oppressed. And so therefore, we need to bend all of reality to serve like this ideological it's disconnected from the reality of creator created and the the design distinctions in that creation and so i i think that obviously these things get our attention because it's so obviously out of step with nature um but it's not just a boxing match we're talking about we are actually looking at a worldview foundation that goes out into all of these existential questions of what is the nature of God? What is the nature of reality? What is the nature? What does it mean to be human? What is the problem in the world? What is the solution to the problem? And those are questions that Christianity answers much, much better than secular humanism does. Hello, mga faith. Brother Adrian Mila here. At gusto ko palang magpasalamat sa Merchiful team for creating our Catholic merch dito sa Adrian Milag TV merch. Itong magaganda nating merch. Kanyar, ito sinusood ko yung Our Lady of Guadalupe. At mga ka sa mga nagtatanong at interested to avail this Catholic merch. At marami pa tayong mga, mga katulad na mga design. Ilalagay ko yung link sa taas or sa baba ng video na to. Pwede kayong mag-avail sa mismong Merchable Shop. At sa Shopee, ayan, so mga ka-faith, i-avail nyo na yan, ilalagay ko yung link sa taas or sa baba ng video na to. Thank you and God bless.